Chen Tong there for us. And joining me now here in Washington is Nina Shong. She is the founder of the China Money Network and the author of Red AI, Victories and Warnings from China's Rise in Artificial Intelligence. She kind of gave us a little bit of a snapshot, but talk to us about some of the more significant breakthroughs we've seen of late. Right, there hasn't really been any uh, fundamental technology breakthrough, and we're still in the early stages of the current uh, deep learning driven AI revolution. Overall, we're seeing AI uh, being applied to more fields, and the application is be becoming more mature and uh, scalable. Uh, this, uh, a big con a difference this year uh, for this conference is that we're seeing more traditional companies attending, including uh, banks, car makers, and telecom firms. So basically, we're seeing the fusion of AI and traditional companies uh, is deepening. Well, AI undoubtedly taking off, and as you said, it's still sort of in its infancy. Nobody has a robot uh, running around the house exactly uh, helping us out, and we're not driving around in these uh, autonomous vehicles. But talk to us about how things could be impacted with our daily lives, and, and have things actually accelerated with the pandemic? Because I know AI has played a role uh, with healthcare in a sense, hasn't it? Yes, for sure. Uh, that was actually a major theme from last year. But this year, if we're uh, looking at this conference, I feel like we're really seeing uh, the industry scaling up the application. So we're no longer at the stage of zero to one. We're at the stage of trying to solve the problem of one to 100, how to scale up AI applications. So for example, Meituan uh, unveiled uh, its uh, drone delivery uh, solutions. Uh, which uses driverless vehicles and also drones. Those are not new technology. But what's new is really how smooth the user uh, uh, experiences. So going forward, we're likely going to see uh, more AI applications becoming more scalable and the user experience becoming more smooth and mature. It seems like last time I was in China, uh, the talk all surrounded around 5G, AI. Uh, you know, it seems like China is really kind of trying to be out there on the faux front. So where is China right now? And where's the rest of the world when it comes to the AI market? China is really uh, the world's AI application lab. Uh, so many of AI's applications uh, is first uh, implemented in China. Many of the AI application is first uh, applied in China uh, with scale. Uh, so, so that is uh, really China's advantage. But the fundamental technological breakthroughs are still taking place in America and other European countries. Uh, but. Um, but I think going forward, uh, China is going to play really a leading role in terms of what I just said of solving that problem from one to 100, the scalability issue and how to make the applications uh, more friendly to users. It's interesting, the Washington Post has a story, it's online right now coming out about the U.S. military trying to reassure everyone that humans will always be in control of AI weapons. Pentagon saying regulation is not necessary, but missiles, guns, and drones in this Post article are, are actually thinking for themselves and, and killing people in combat and have been for years. So we don't really think about the dangers inherent with AI. Should we be thinking about that as we look at these advances? Should there be regulations in place? What would, should we be thinking about in regards to that, do you think? For sure, AI ethics and AI uh, security issues, those are actually some of the key topics uh, being discussed by this year's uh, AI uh, forum in Shanghai. And I think uh, humans are smart enough to never give control of their critical infrastructure and critical applications to machines. Uh, that is the, basically the, 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 the most uh, important uh, bottom line that we have to keep, that humans have to be in control of all the machines that's, that's running uh, our lives and our factories and our cars. Nina, thanks so much for your insights. Really appreciate it.